everyone, it's Ryan Metzler here again, and today we're going to take a look at a card game. Not just any card game, though, we're going to take a look at Chimera, which, uh, in my opinion, is what I would call the sequel or the three-player alternative to one of my favorite games of all time, Tichu. So Chimera is a three-player climbing card game, very much in the same vein as Tichu. Uh, it's designed by a friend of mine, it's de designed by Ralph Anderson, uh, he's working with Eagle Griffin, but he published this game through Z-Man Games. Now, this is a game that I was looking forward to a lot, so I'm excited to talk to you about it, show you what it is, and then we'll come back here and we'll get my opinions of Chimera at the end. So here you can see the components for Chimera, which is a climbing game very similar, or at least uh, rooted, in Tichu. If you've played Tichu or you've watched my Tichu video before, this game will at least seem similar to you in some ways. The first way is that the suits are going to look very similar to you. This suit here is the exact same artwork as the green suit from Tichu. The black is the same, the blue and the red are all the same suits. Uh, you have swords, kind of pagodas, stars, and these little gemstones that are the suits of the game. However, suits in this game have no real purpose, uh, so you don't have to worry about them at all. Each suit in this game, however, will be slightly different from the suit of cards that is in Tichu. Insofar as that the cards run 1 through 12, and then there is a separate card, the hero. When you're making runs of cards in this game, if you've ever played a trick-taking game or any type of card game that makes runs, you can only run the numbered cards, 1 through 12. You cannot run the hero. It is an individual card. It can be used in sets, for example, 2 or 3 or 4 of a kind, but cannot be used in a run. Another very nice difference, and one that I really want to highlight, is that in this game they've marked the cards that are worth points. They show right on the 2 that it's worth 10 points, and they show on the 11 that it's worth 5. This will be the same in all of the suits, so 2s and 11s will always be worth 10 and 5 points respectively. Aside from these suits of cards, of which there are four in the deck, there are two special cards in the game. There's the Pia, uh, which is essentially going to be a card that can be used in a run as a wild. It cannot be used in a set as a wild, as it can never duplicate another card. Uh, it's either that, or it is going to be the second highest single card, which is higher than a hero, which is higher than all of the numbered cards, but lower than the Chimera. The Chimera here is going to be the highest individual card. And the two of these cards together form what is called a Chimera, tra uh, Chimera Trap, which is a special sort of combination that can be played and is higher than any other type of combination in the game. There's another type of trap, which is four of a kind, just four cards of the same, suit, same rank. Those are also a trap and can be played to beat any other type of combination, much like bombs and teach you, except for they can't be played out of order. You must still wait your turn in order to play. Now, the way this game is going to work is that you're going to take all of these cards, you're going to shuffle them up. So we'll take our deck of cards and we'll shuffle it here. Once it's shuffled, you're going to offer a cut to the player to your right. You're going to offer the cut to that player and they're going to cut the deck. Or it doesn't really matter, you can offer it to the left or right, but they're going to cut the deck. And then they're going to take the cut card and they're going to place it on top of that cut pile. They'll then finish the cut by placing the deck on top here, and then they'll deal out the cards. Real quickly, I'm going to deal them out, and then we'll continue the video. So now we've dealt out the three hands, and there will always be three players in Chimera because it's, well, a three-player game. Uh, but you'll see that one card is dealt face up, and of course that makes sense. We flipped one card face up in the deck. This player is going to be the player who has the chance to bid first, and this is going to be a game where bidding is going to be very important. Additionally, you'll see there are three cards just sitting in the center of the table here. These are kind of the kitty that the Chimera, the player that bids the most for the turn, will get to take and add to their hand. Now, what are we bidding for? Well, we're bidding that we're going to go out first, and a legal bid is either 20, 30, or 40. When you start bidding, you're going to look at your hand and see if you think you can void yourself of cards first. If you do, you may make a bid. Like I said, either 20, 30, or 40. If you bid 20, or if you pass, the bid would then go to the next player. That player could then decide to bid more than you bid. If it was pass, obviously they could start with 20. If you bid 20, they could go to 30 or 40. They could also pass, and it would go to the next player. And they have the chance to overbid whoever else's bid. If one player wins the bid, meaning the other two players pass in succession and that player has bid something, they're going to take these three cards and they become the Chimera, with the other two players becoming the Chimera Hunters. This means that essentially there are kind of two teams, the Chimera himself and the two Hunters, who are trying to work together to stop the Chimera from going out first. However, they're not really on a team as they don't share any points. Regardless, the player who wins the bid, will say it's this player here, who bid 20. They're going to take these three cards and they have now bet 20 points that they'll go out first. 
If they had been thir bet 30, the opposing hunters would have the opportunity to trade cards, one card between them. And if they bid 40, they'd have the opportunity to trade two cards. From this point on, it's going to be a relatively simple climbing card game. The players will pick up their cards, and the player who won the bet, the Chimera, has the opportunity to start leading sets. Now, the sets in this game are slightly different from other card games. You'll see that there are some very similar, similar ones, single cards, pairs, and sequences of pairs like you see in Tichu. However, there's a key difference. You must have three consecutive sets of pairs, or six cards, I should say, in order to play consecutive pairs. For example, eights, nines, and tens. You can also play triplets, or you can play a sequence of triplets, which must be at least two sets of consecutive triplets. In this case, you can see ones and twos. Again, six cards. From there, things start to get a little bit different. You can play a set of triplets and throw a card away with them. So at least three cards allows you to throw away one card. And you can see they've done that with a one, the ones and a six here. Uh, instead, you could throw away a full house, essentially a triplet and a pair. Then you start getting into sequences of triplets with an attached card each. Much like an individual triplet, you can throw away one card. If you have a sequence of triplets, you can throw away one card for each. Or you can play a full house with each of them, getting rid of four extra cards instead of just two. You can also play a straight, which is a sequence of at least five cards. You can play a quad with two attached single cards, so four cards of the same will let you throw away two individuals, or will let you throw away two pairs. Finally, there are the two traps that I talked about that can be played out of turn order. Well, not out of turn order, but out of sequence type. If somebody leads a pair, you would usually have to follow with a higher pair in order to beat it. Traps do not follow this rule, and you can play them on your turn to play over any type of other, same, or other type of set. So if somebody plays uh, a three of a kind, you can beat it with a Chimera Flight, which is both of the Chimeras paired, or with a straight four of a kind, not throwing away any cards. Now, as I said, the Chimera is trying to go out first, and the other two players are trying to stop him. What are the rewards for this, and how do you score points? Well, I already showed you that taking tricks that include the 2s and the 11s are worth 10 and 5 points for each of those cards that you take. In addition, if the Chimera goes out first, he'll get double what he bets, so 40, 60, or 80 points if he bid 20, 30, or 40. In addition, there are some special things that can earn the Chimera points. These are called 25-point bonuses, and they are as follows. For each trap, which is four of a kind, or the Chimera Flight that's played during the round of tricks, the player who is the Chimera will get 25 bonus points if they're the first person to go out. This means that they can either try and play them to benefit themselves, or if their opponents try and play them to screw them up and fail to, they'll get 25 bonus points for having succeeded in getting through that difficult trap. Alternatively, if the players who are the hunters do not manage to play a card before the Chimera goes out, each of the players that hasn't played a card will be worth 25 points to the Chimera. So you can theoretically get a lot of bonus points, 25 for each player that doesn't play and 25 for each trap played, if you happen to go out first as the Chimera, not to mention the points that you bet to start with. The Hunters will get 20 points if they manage to set the Chimera, stopping him from going out first, and will also set the Chimera back a number of points equal to what they bid. Finally, everyone will add the points on their cards and record them down on the sheet, and that will be one round. You'll start another round, dealing the cards out after cutting and placing one card face up, finding out who's the, chi who's the first player to bid, choosing a Chimera, and continuing from there. If at some point nobody ever bids on a hand, the hand is destroyed, you redeal, and you go again, and the player who gets dealt the face of card, again if nobody bids, is forced to bid 20 and will be the Chimera for that round. You're going to play the game to a set number of points. Usually it's 400 for the basic game, but if you want a shorter game, you can go down to 300. A longer game can go up to five, six, or seven, whatever you'd like to play to, but essentially whoever best manages to bet, void themselves of their cards, take tricks, and hopefully uh, get some extra points by setting other players, or by avoiding or playing Chimera Traps will be the winner of Chimera. Well, there you have it. Uh, that is Chimera, and let me just go ahead and say that coming up with a game with three players that plays as well as Tichu uh, was, in my opinion, going to be very, very difficult, but Ralph has done an excellent job of doing so. Chimera uh, is a great alternative to teach you if you only have three players. If I have four players, of course, I'm going to be playing teach you, but you can't play Chimera with four, and you can but don't want to play teach you with three. Uh, the fact that he's taken this and kind of made it a one versus two type of game, uh, and at the same time made those two players who are teaming up 
have to score independently uh, kind of gives it a nice dynamic where it's not necessarily two work working against one, but it's kind of one and a half almost working against one in order to try and set the Chimera player. You still want to take tricks from your partner in order to get the points, uh, so there's some tension there as well. The way that he's worked it out with throwing off cards uh, and getting extra cards when you're the Chimera in order to make your hand better, but make it harder to go out, uh, is very interesting. So the, the sets of three where you can throw off one or a pair, the sets of four where you can throw off two individual cards or two pairs, uh, and the fact that it's almost sometimes necessary to play four cards without throwing things off in order to have a trap in order to take the lead, uh, is just a, a complex dynamic that makes the game uh, very good and gives you a ton of options on your play in order to try and figure out how to best void yourself of cards. Uh, the scoring mechanic is good, it's clean, the cards are well made and labeled for points, and all in all just an excellent design uh, that's going to become a very uh, popular go-to for me when I don't have four players at the end of a long game night. One that will be coming out frequently, uh, and it's just an excellent, excellent design. So if you love Tichu, uh, definitely check this one out, I think you're really going to enjoy it. That's Chimera from Z-Man Games. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock.